yeah, I, I have no idea what you want me to do. In this video, I'm going to share with you why you should or should not do hand signals and doubles. And if you do decide to use hand signals with your partner, how to do it properly. We're always talking about communications and doubles. And I'm going to start out by saying not all communication is good. And hand signals can be really difficult. Just we need to be a little bit more clear guys. <laughs> with the finger. I didn't understand where you go. <laughs> Here's why I don't necessarily like them for club players. Especially if you're a newer player, you're going to have a hard time reliably placing the serve. If you are kind of just happy that the serve is going in and then you have somebody standing in net telling you where to serve when you can't really reliably do that, adds a whole lot of pressure to you. The whole idea of using hand signals is to call plays and the play starts with a well-placed serve. So if you can't do that, it's going to be really difficult to make use of, yeah, those signs. Another reason why I don't necessarily like them is that a lot of players at club level have not mastered more basic skills that you need to run these plays. Placing the serve is one, but it's also being really comfortable at net, placing the volley, knowing where to move, knowing how to cover the line when your partner is serving and so on and so forth. So I think you want to focus on other basic skills before you use the hand signals. The other reason is they can be really complicated. I, I, I did yeah. like this. Well, like this? No, let's say no. Let's go. Like this? You stay. You stay in the same place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? You, you go to, this, to the, your place. The, the normal any, side. any finger, you cross. Uh, <laughs> because you're actually making two calls as the server's partner. You're, number one, telling your server where you want the ball, the serve, to go. And then you're also telling them what you're going to do, whether you're going to stay, whether you're going to fake, whether you're going to poach. So you're communicating two things and you should be doing that before the first and before the second. So that's a lot of things to communicate. If you're not used to it, if you're newer to doubles, you know what? I like it a lot better if the two people just get together briefly, quick huddle and maybe run a play on the first serve. And it can be something as simple as this. If my first serve goes in, you're gonna go on the first ball. Keep it simple, keep it comfortable, and keep it comfortable for both players, not just yourself. When can you start using hand signals? And I'll also go over why they're actually really good. I think both players should at least be able to place their first serve either towards the alley or towards the tee, because it's the placement of the serve that allows you to run a certain play. If you kind of have to guess all the time where the ball's going, that kind of defeats the purpose. I would also start to use them when both players know how to poach, where to place the poach ball, and how to keep moving after that. The plays are designed to distract your opponent, even maybe force an error off the return, or then pick off an easy volley. If one player is not comfortable doing that, then I wouldn't use hand signals. Both of you have to be comfortable running the plays, calling the plays, reading the plays. If one is more comfortable with the huddle, Let's just keep doing that. That's fine too. Why should you be using hand signals? You can communicate a lot really quickly. Remember, you wanna call where you want your partner to serve and also what you're gonna do after they hit their serve. What do you wanna do with the return? Are you gonna poach, are you gonna fake, are you gonna stay? And you wanna do that before the first and the second. And you can do that really quickly with hand signals. You can change the call a lot quicker with hand signals. If you huddle, and a lot of teams do both, if you huddle and then you're going up to net and you're seeing something that you don't necessarily like that gels with the play that you've called before, you can still change that call and it goes a lot quicker with hand signals. Using hand signals also, to my mind, signals to your opponents that you are a well played in team, as we say in German, that you're very comfortable with each other, that you know what the other person is doing and that you have a really good understanding of doubles. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the worst reason to do hand signals is because they're cool. But you know what? They are kind of cool. So, yeah. The first signal is you telling your partner where to serve. And you're simply showing them the direction using your fingers. So if I want them to go towards the alley, pointing this way, towards the T, towards the body. The second signal is what you're intending to do with the return your opponent is hitting. And you have two, three-ish options, actually. One is to stay. You're just holding your line. The other one, of course, is to poach. And the third one, 
which kind of should be happening all the time anyways, is to fake. Because when you're standing there, you shouldn't be calling, I'm gonna stay. And then you're just standing there rooted to your spot. If you're planning to stay, you keep your fist closed. If you're planning to go, hand open. And if you're planning to fake, you pulse your fist. Now, the fake should really be movement. Shake and bake, baby. It should be something like this instead of just this. And you're doing the exact same thing on the ad side. This is your T-serve, wide serve, body serve, stay, fake, and poach. A few more things about the place. Once you've called a play, you play it, you run it. Even if the serve's quality is not necessarily what you want it. Because what happens a whole lot is that at the last moment, the net player then sees, oh, that's not the serve I wanted, and they don't continue to play. If that's a poach, for instance, your serving partner is crossing behind you, and you're basically leaving the entire side of the court open. So run the play once it's called. When you're the net player and you're calling your signs, mix up the sequence with which you call them out. Because if you're always going, for instance, through, I want you to serve wide, middle, or T, at some point your opponents might be able to pick that up. As the server, respond with always the same emotion and the same pitch of tone when you're actually either accepting the call or you're asking your partner to give you something else because you don't like what they call. So here's what you don't want to do. No. Yes. <laughs> While the net player is initiating the call, these are suggestions. If you're the server and you don't like the play that your partner wants you to run, you can always say no. No. Yeah. If you encounter it too many times that you're disagreeing with what you want to do, then that might be something you need to talk about. It should not be happening a whole lot of time that you're basically declining every single thing that your partner throws out at you first. So you're seeing with all the prerequisites that both players, to my mind, should have to use hand signals, how to do them, how many options there are, that you have to call it first and second serves, you now see why it's maybe a better option for newer players to still huddle. I'm not saying they shouldn't do hand signals, but I am saying that I've seen way more points being lost because they are confusing when people are trying to first use them than them actually being something that elevates your game. If you are deciding to use hand signals, you have to get on the practice court. I would not say use signals that very first time you're meeting your partner, which can happen a whole lot of times in doubles play when you're playing league. Play a couple of practice sets until both of you are comfortable with the hand signals. If you like this video, go ahead and check this one out. It'll help you to fix one of the most common mistakes I see players at club level make in doubles.